I'm Thomas Baldrick at ASH 2014. Delighted to have with us Dr. Ruben Mesa from the Mayo Clinic. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Let's talk about uh, one of your bodies of work, the relief study. Can you give us an, an idea what that's about? Sure. So there were two complementary phase three studies we conducted with ruxolitinib in patients with polycythemia vera. Relief was one of those. It was the first study that really looked at symptom response as the primary endpoint of a study for patients with polycythemia vera. These were individuals who had polycythemia vera, they needed therapy, they were on hydroxyurea, but had uh, an excessive symptom burden, which we had quantified prior to enrollment. Patients were then randomized to either remain on hydrea in a blinded way, or in a blinded way be placed on ruxolitinib. How many patients were there? Uh, just under 100 patients. Okay. What do you see as the primary concerns for patients with PV? Well, patients with PV have a variety of difficulties, including splenomegaly, uh, the uh, need uh, for cytoreduction to decrease the risk of thrombosis and bleeding, and very significant symptomatic burden, which they can have as well. So it's a constellation of difficulties, and in some in individuals, one of those can trump the other. What were some of the key findings you had to report? Well, it was interesting. So first, we did find that uh, ruxolitinib was better than hydroxyurea for controlling symptoms, either in aggregate or individual symptoms. Now, we did learn much as a symptom trial uh, regarding the impact of placebo effect. So this was a study that we saw a clear difference with ruxolitinib and hydroxyurea, but it did not yet reach statistical significance. So we were very intrigued by this, and in part we saw, one, uh, the power of the placebo effect, so that some individuals on a stable dose of hydroxyurea had a clear change in their symptoms without a change in therapy. So that, that was part, and as we've analyzed the study, we think that perhaps it might have been underpowered given that impact. Second, patients needed to be symptomatic to enroll in the study, uh, and we fear that it may have slightly biased in that there were some individuals that had a higher uh, symptom burden at, at uh, trial screening than they did at baseline. When we actually adjust for that, we see uh, a very clear and statistical difference between the ruxolitinib and hydroxyurea arm. So it's interesting, as we're looking at symptoms as a primary goal, uh, it may have uh, unduly influenced uh, patients' uh, completion of the baseline screening instrument. So it's very much of a learning process, but still we view a, a positive experience. So where does this intrigue lead you next? Well, it was meant as a complementary study with the other study that was the response study. In the response study, this was the much larger, uh, better powered randomized phase three in individuals that had failed hydroxyurea and they were able either to go on to hydroxyurea or on to best alternative therapy or on to ruxolitinib. There we were able to clearly see improvement in uh, hematocrit control, in the size of the spleen, and statistically very clear difference in terms of symptomatic burden. And I report on those data in an oral presentation here at ASH as well. So I think the, the truth really lies in the response study, uh, and we see the difference in the relief study, uh, and viewing them together, I think that they are consistent in terms of demonstrating the benefits of ruxolitinum for patients with symptomatic PV. So now that you mentioned the response trial, what can you tell us from that, the key findings of that? Well, that study was really the first time we've had a, a clear second line study in patients with polycythemia vera. All of this work really was built on the phase two studies of ruxolitinib and P-Vera, which were individuals that had the disease, a required therapy, and had failed hydroxyurea. Surge for Stopcheck and others had led those phase two studies. So the response was really randomized between patients going on ruxolitinib in an open label fashion or best alternative therapy. Physicians could choose their best alternative therapy, interferon, anagrelide. The majority actually elected to put their patients still on hydroxyurea in large part uh, a reflection of really how few options there are for patients with polycythemia vera. The primary composite endpoint was around control of erythrocytosis as well as improvement in splenomegaly uh, and was vastly superior to best alternative therapy. As a secondary set of endpoints uh, where I was involved was the really the symptomatic profile. So what we report at this year's meeting is that as we look at individual symptoms 
night sweats, day sweats, itching, quality of life, vast superiority of ruxolitinib versus best alternative therapy. That quality of life, life aspect was really important to you on this, wasn't it? Very, very important. Having been involved with caring for these patients for, for many years, uh, it's something that we found that really uh, can be a genuine concern for patients. Patients with polycythemia vera are heterogeneous, so not every patient is symptomatic, but there are some that the symptoms really can be overwhelming. You can imagine you know, having uh, severe itching that is you know, day in and day out, 24-7. Sadly, there have even been suicides over the uh, frustration of the severe itching and symptoms that people can have. We identify that there can be medical disability related to the symptoms. In a separate abstract, we presented this year's meeting in a landmark survey of patients with MPNs, about 800 patients with MPNs. Those with PV as well as ET and myelofibrosis, we see that well over a third of them uh, have at least one sick day per month that is attributable to their disease-related symptoms, and about half cancel at least one major elective event per month based on how they're feeling. So events such as going to a wedding or a bar mitzvah or other things. So the impact on them is very significant. Finally, we see the stress of having uh, a rare disease is a stress. Uh, patients with Pivera, 75% said that they have real issues with anxiety about the unknown aspect of their future uh, and having such a disease. Good work, doctor. Thanks for coming by and sharing your information with us and, and best of luck in helping these patients. Uh, thank you very much, Noah. Great pleasure.